So today I'm going to talk about this integration of Visual Arc uh, with uh, Grasshopper in a way that uh, you can create uh, Visual Arc objects from Grasshopper definitions. Okay, I will show some examples and some tips about how this uh, workflow, um, how this feature works. Okay, so you can uh, get a, a good idea about all the possibilities for this uh, way of working. So basically, you may know that um, Visual Art has a set of architectural objects. Okay, they have a 3D and a plan view representation, and they are associative, all right? Like doors can be inserted in, inside curtain walls or walls. Okay, and they can be edited through parameters. Okay, in the right hand, you see the uh, properties panel of a curtain wall. So you can change some parameters by object, okay, such as the uh, alignment, for example, or the height in case of walls or curtain walls. But there are other parameters that uh, can only be edited by a style. For example, the, in case of curtain walls, the way the, this grid is uh, uh, organized, or in case of walls, for example, the number of layers and the thickness of each layer. Okay, so basically each object has some parameters that are editable by object and others that are editable by styles. And the styles are basically uh, what define the features of visual art objects, okay? Um, so you can see here the styles dialog for a, for a door, okay? For a system, a system door, which uh, has a frame component, a leaf component. Inside that leaf, there is a glass component. And by selecting each one of these components, there are some features that you can change to get uh, different uh, results, okay? Different results for different uh, door styles. Also, uh, the profile of this uh, door is uh, determined by the style, okay? So you can get different, uh, different uh, profiles for, for different door styles. But of course, these existing parameters are a bit limited, okay? When it comes to produce new, uh, new doors. So there is the option to assign blocks for the 3D and the plan view representation of door styles. But of course, blocks are not parametric, okay? They are static. And if you need to change the dimensions, you need to assign a different block. So the idea behind this uh, integration, this Grasshopper styles uh, workflow is that you can turn any Grasshopper definition into a visual art object and have inside the visual art dialogs, all the parameters that you have created in the definition. All right. And um, well, with just definition, you can just obtain different results for a door in this case. Or in this other example, we can have multiple objects that are using the same redefinition in the background, but you can change their dimensions uh, in the, from the properties panel. All right. So it's like uh, baking all the objects, but still having them as uh, parametric objects. All right. So let's see all these uh, in, in uh, some examples in a live demo. By the way, up to the current version, all this workflow can be used on all objects except walls and curtain walls. Okay, this is something that we plan in, in version three, in Visual Arc version three. Okay, so uh, up to now, all the objects except these two can be created through Grasshopper definitions. And well, here you can see that uh, for each object type, there is a method to, to insert it. I mean, each object requires a specific uh, input geometry. So in case of walls and quartering walls, uh, you require a path curve, same as uh, beams, for example, or uh, railings. In case of columns, the insertion, insertion point is just one point, same as uh, openings like doors and, and windows, which by the way, also require a profile curve, okay? In case of stairs, the, the geometry input is just an insert point, even though that when you Draw stairs, you define several points for its itinerary, but basically the insertion point is just one point. And in case of slabs and roofs, you require a boundary. Okay. In case of um, furniture objects, element objects, or annotations, also you require an insert point. This is very important to, to, to be aware because when we create the definitions, we will require one, uh, some kind of geometry as an input geometry for depending on the object type. Okay. Um, by the way, the option to create slabs and roofs right now in, in Grasshopper is, um, OK, 
okay, it's available, but let's say that the styles are not prepared to require a boundary curve, but an insert point. That means that dimensions of the boundary must be inserted as parameters, okay? Um, well, this is something that I will maybe uh, explain in another, in another session, but uh, when it's more, uh, let's say, more advanced, okay? So we'll focus on the, on the other objects in this session. So, okay, I'm gonna start uh, opening Grasshopper. I will uh, we'll close this and I'm gonna show, um, well, the example of this column that you saw in the first, in the first um, uh, slide of the presentation that produces this, this geometry, okay? So of course, the current parameters to create columns don't include these <laughs> uh, parameters to create such a, such a column design. So basically in the grasshopper definition, there are uh, a list of inputs that define the shape of this object. Okay, here I can define the radius of the whole column, the height, okay, some rotation of these, of these tubes, okay. Uh, how many elements, a pair of elements we, we, we have and the radius of, the, of these tubes. So I will ignore everything that it's going on here. I mean, this uh, webinar is not, it's not the purpose to explain how this definition has been created. The main idea here is that uh, what we get as an output, all right? So basically here, we've got two different uh, components, all right, geometry uh, components that collect the final result of this, of this definition. And in order to, uh, by visual art, to read this um, geometry as components for the final style, we need to connect this into a geometry param. So I will go to, to the params, select uh, a geometry param, could be also a VREP, if this is what comes out here is a VREP, but uh, I prefer to use geometry, which is more generic and will make sure it would work with any other kind of geometry and connect it here. All right, so I'm, con I'm connecting these two groups of tips into this uh, single geometry param that is not further connected with anything. So if we rename this, I'm gonna call this uh, tubes. Okay, I can even display the name. And this is what Visual Art will uh, need to identify these two groups of geometry, okay? So I'm gonna save this definition. Also remember that here we've got these uh, numeric sliders named accordingly. So it will be easier to ident identify what they do. And I can just close or hide uh, Grasshopper now and open the uh, column uh, styles dialog. Remember that you can open them. You can open this dialog doing right click on this uh, icon and I will create a new style. So I'm gonna select this option. This one is for regular uh, new column styles, but I will start, I will select this grasshopper style to open the new style wizard. And the first thing I need to do is to select the grasshopper definition. So I'm gonna select this one Click next. We can already see here the geometry that the definition generates. I'm gonna uh, give a name for this style, select the definition units. Okay, I know that, uh, it has been done in meters and here an insert point. So basically here, if we had a, a point, a reference point in the grasshopper file, we could use it as a, a geometry that uh, is involved in the final result of the definition, okay, of the of the object. Imagine a reference point uh, uh, whose um, distance to the zero coordinates uh, determines the height of these tubes. So this is something that we could reference here and uh, be, uh, get it involved in the final result. If we set it to known, that means that the, um, the object will be inserted according to the, to the center of this point, which corresponds to the zero coordinates in the grasshopper definition, okay? I actually created this grass, grasshopper definition taking the zero coordinates as the center, bottom center of this uh, uh, object. So I go next, here I get this geometry pattern that I named uh, as tubes, okay? Which is something that, by the way, can be also assigned to a plan view. So we could have several components according to how do you, how we want to use them, either to, for the 3D model or for plan view. And finally, here we see the list of uh, sliders, the list of parameters that um, we need to decide how we want to edit them, okay?
okay? For example, the height, something that we want to edit uh, by object, okay? Remember that there are parameters that are edit editable by style, by object. And in this case, we can also select uh, something uh, to be editable by, de by definition, which means that um, this parameter will be hidden in the final dialogs, okay? In this case, I select object, and actually I'm gonna select all these other parameters and also select them by object. Okay. Actually, uh, if I get a, let's say, a very complex definition, which uh, has different groups, I was grouping you know, some, uh, some sliders in the grasshopper definition, I can display them just by uh, these filters. Okay. So it could be a useful option to display the, the parameters. All right, so um, also you can assign different, um, different parameters, different data type, okay? For example, length uh, data will be, um, is something that will be uh, scaled. It will run the scale command on that object while integers won't, okay? We don't want that pair of elements scale if we uh, make an object uh, two times its size, okay? So this is also important to, to take into account. And that's it. I mean, we have now this column as a new uh, column style within uh, our list of columns. And I just need to uh, insert it to see how it works. So at this point, no grasshopper knowledge is required. If somebody creates a, a new grasshopper style and shares the document with you, okay, this is what you will get and you will be able to use it uh, without having a knowledge of, of grasshopper. So I can insert different objects here. I can uh, change the values on the fly. Okay, I can change the uh, radius, for example, to one meter and have different objects, okay, with completely uh, different values. And I can change the number, um, okay, the rotation and all these all these other parameters. Actually, I have here the number of uh, pair of elements. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we have three different objects, one grasshopper definition in the background, and we can change the parameters that we define it. We uh, decided that they were editable by object, okay, from the properties panel, just by changing this. Okay, change uh, the head and any other thing. Um, great, and just following on with this example, what if we want to uh, add more detail to this grasshopper definition? For example, if we wish to uh, have all these tubes as separate components. So I would uh, just go back to the grasshopper definition. I'm gonna copy this component and connect each one of these reps to a new geometry pattern, okay? So I'm gonna name these tubes, uh, tubes one, and I'm gonna name this as tubes two. So since I have now two components with different names and that they are not further connected with anything, I mean, if we have something like this, this middle, uh, middle component wouldn't be identified, all right? So we need to have all the geometry patterns as ending components that are not further connected. In the same way, we have like uh, unconnected components, this won't be, won't be detected by visual arc. So I'm gonna save now this definition, close it. I'm gonna open the column styles dialog again. And now I will do right click on this, uh, on this style. Actually, if we expand this, we can see the unique component that it has. But now I'm gonna do right click on this uh, style. So I will select this edit option and the uh, grasshopper wizard starts again. So I could select it or just reload it if the path, if the file path hasn't changed. And the grasshopper definition will be reevaluated. So I'm gonna click next. Okay, we'll uh, just leave the other uh, parameters as they were. And just notice here that we've got now the two components. Okay, we could even say that we don't want to import one of them. But I'm gonna import uh, both. And since they, are, uh, they have been uh, split in two different components, this is the parameters that I will uh, leave as they were. Now I have the option to select one or another and change, for example, the material, okay? Or change the, the color, 
and uh, well, treat them differently in uh, when it comes to to show them in in section view, for example, for section uh, attributes or for, for materials or colors. Okay, or I can assign them to specific layers uh, if they were different parts of an assembly of, of object. I click OK, and of course, the current objects with that style now update to the to the changes. All right, so let's go on with another example. Okay, with a different object. I'm gonna move this a little bit aside. And uh, I will show you an example of a door. Okay, actually a B folding door. So I'm gonna open a new example. Open this definition. You can see here the, the result. I mean, again, just forget all what's going on inside here. I want you to focus on the different parameters that I set up for this definition. Basically one to control the width, uh, the height. Okay, also can control here the frame width, uh, frame depth, all right. And um, well, the aperture, of course, and so on. So I can change the number of leaves here if I wish. So basically I decided how much detailed this final object it would be, okay. And at the end of this definition, in this case, we've got a geometry component for the glasses, another for the leaves, okay, another for the frame, and another one for the opening profile. And this is important in this case. Remember that um, the, um, the doors in Visual Arc take their middle bottom point as the base point for, the, for matching the position of the opening with the geometry. Okay, the same happens with blocks. And if we take a look at this uh, definition in the top viewport, I'm gonna put this in, in wireframe. It is very important to notice that this uh, geometry in Grasshopper has been created in the zero coordinates as the bottom middle point, okay? This is key to make sure that uh, all the geometry will fit in the, um, in the opening that when, when we uh, create a, a door style out of this definition. All right, so um, also you have another component here for this for this opening arrow, okay? But all right, I'm gonna save now this definition and um, go back to the door styles, open the door styles dialog, create a new style from this grasshopper style option and select this um, default or multi leaf file. Okay, so in the first step, in this case, for the door, we need to define which, is, which one of the components that we had as uh, output uh, params performs as the opening profile. And since I named them accordingly, I can identify them, uh, now the proper one easily. Okay, so the curve that we've got here around is the one that I will use as the opening profile. Okay, uh, I will click uh, next. I'm gonna call this just default door. And here, well, we've got the, uh, the other four components. Okay, I click next and here I can edit how I want to, uh, well, edit each parameter. For example, the aperture, something that I want to edit by object. And in this case, the slider was a uh, value that went from zero to one, but I want to convert this into a percentage. Okay. And I can select other, um, other parameters like, uh, well, the height, the width, okay, number of leaves and just set this by object and leave them editable by style. Um, actually, the leaf type is something that I want to hide and leave it uh, by definition. So also all these values will be the default values by style, okay? I click finish. Actually, I can select the glasses and uh, assign, like, assign to the glass, uh, a glass material, so it looks nice in, um, in render view, and I can just insert uh, one of these doors now into this into this wall. Okay, so here it is. I can insert it, and once it is inserted, I'm gonna make this uh, wider. Okay, I can have a couple of objects, and just change the features of each one independently. Okay, for example, I'm gonna change the aperture of this one to uh, twenty percent. Okay or if uh, it's uh, maybe 
uh, smaller, I can change the number of leaves to three leaves. Uh, okay, I'm gonna choose it from here. So these parameters accept uh, uh, sliders, value lists, okay? Also Boolean uh, uh, button, buttons. So uh, with all these uh, parameters, you can uh, create your, your parameters in the final object. And remember, remember from here, we will be able to edit the parameters we left editable by object, but if we uh, come back to the door styles, we can select this default door and edit the rest of parameters that we left editable by, by object, okay? Such as the uh, frame uh, width, for example. Okay, so when I click here, it will affect all door styles. And now let's see uh, one tip, okay? Imagine that since, uh, imagine that we want to take this frame depth um, uh, by the uh, door, uh, by the wall thickness where it is hosted. Okay, this is something that is available with um, the native uh, doors. I mean, this is a regular uh, system door of Visual Arc, and the frame component has an option to adjust depth to the wall thickness. So, how we could use this option in uh, doors created from Grasshopper definitions? So, I'm going to show you how. I'm going to open back that Grasshopper definition and we'll, we'll focus on the parameter that uh, edits the frame depth. Okay, here, here it is. So if we name this parameter this way, so I'm going to change the name of it uh, and we just uh, type this code uh, where we uh, write this, which means what, what we get from that grasshopper definition, that would be the, the door. Then we type host that uh, represents the wall where this uh, door will be inserted. And finally, the property that we, that we want to obtain, in this case, the thickness. Okay, now we can just close this, uh, this code. So once we get this, this uh, code, okay, again, where this means the, the geometry that comes out, I mean, in this case, the door, host means the wall, and thickness is the property of the host. I mean, here we could also have uh, the height, the, um, uh, well, the uh, alignment, so any other property, okay. Um, in this case, when we insert that door inside a, a wall, this value will be replaced by the, the wall thickness. So I'm gonna save now this definition, minimize this again, and I will do, I will uh, just, edit this default door style as I, I've done with the column. Okay, so I'm gonna edit it, reload the grasshopper definition so it reads the changes. I wanna just click next. Okay, nothing else change. But now we will see how the doors now fit into the, into the wall thickness. All right, so if we change this style and we uh, say generic 100 millimeters, you see that the, um, the frame uh, adapts to this, to this dimension, okay? So of course, this provides even more uh, possibilities to, to combine uh, yeah, grasshopper objects with existing uh, walls, okay? Um, all right, let's see another example, okay? So now we'll see how we can use uh, geometry as uh, parameters. Okay, parameters that we can edit by style or by object. And I'm gonna show it with, um, with a railing, with a railing object. In this case, the railing, remember that is an object that requires a path curve. Okay, so we'll see what we need in the grasshopper definition. So I'm gonna open document. I'm gonna select this definition. All right, and well, this definition does several things. So I'm gonna first uh, draw a curve that will be uh, the, the path, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select this component, which is a curve. I'm gonna reference it here, okay? And uh, then, uh, well, I need a rail profile. So I'm gonna draw a small, a small curve 
for the profile. So I'm gonna right click here and reference this curve. Okay, this generates an extrusion. All right, and now I'm gonna use a uh, rep a reference rep as a post. Okay, so I'm gonna just draw a small um, a small object here. Could be a um, a post of one meter, and I'm gonna um, just deform it a little bit, just. Uh, to provide you an example of some kind of geometry that is not available with the system uh, railings. I mean, you can have post, but not with this kind of shape. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna reference this B rep. Okay. As you can see, this B rep just aligns to the to to this. I uh, will change the height. Okay. Of that uh, that railing. And uh, well, this definition is created in a way that uh, you cannot control the rotation of this of this object. And uh, also, there is another method. Okay, so this is a value list that uh, changes the, the orientation. So if I want, for example, to make these objects orient to a point, that is reference from here. So I'm gonna set one point. Um, I'm gonna draw it first. I'm gonna select this point. Okay, now all the, uh, these uh, elements uh, orient towards the position of this point. Okay, as you, can, as you can appreciate if I move it in one place or another. Okay, so I'm gonna save this definition now. As you can see, we have a combination of uh, uh, numeric values, but also geometry as input parameters. And we also have got two curves, one that performs as the, this railing uh, profile, another as the railing path. Okay, it's important to name them um, accordingly. So again, it will be it will be very helpful to identify them. And at the end of the definition, I have one geometry pattern for the rail and another for the posts. Okay, I'm gonna save this now. And let's see what happens when we create a railing from this definition. So I'm gonna select, well, I open the railing style dialog, select grasshopper style. I will select now this definition all right so we don't see nothing in the uh, we don't see anything in the preview because you will see now that there is some missing geometry in this wizard so first of all um uh well in the first step of this wizard i need to select which one of the reference curves perform as uh, the uh, railing path okay so i need to select the proper one the proper curve and when i click next I see the two components. Again, I don't see the preview because there is some missing information yet, but now we will be able to assign it. So basically within the list of parameters, there is the VREP missing here or uh, set as unknown because the, um, it's, we didn't save in the definition. I mean, if you want that by default, this wizard reads uh, a VREP, you, you may need to internalize data in that VREP component. Okay, same for the rail profile or the point. So in case of the VREP, I'm gonna pick one. So we'll select this one that we created already. For the railing profile, I will do the same thing. I'm gonna select this one. And uh, finally, as the reference point, I mean, we could just pick one and here I'm gonna just say uh, zero, zero, zero. Okay, remember that this is the point that uh, towards uh, the, these VREPs orient when we choose this uh, method of our rotation, okay, which is towards a point, all right. And uh, well, I'm just I'm just gonna select all these parameters and edit them by object, okay. I click finish, and click OK, and now I can run uh, one of these railings, the railing I've just created, okay. And uh, you can see that. Well, it has all the uh, features of the of the grasshopper definition, or since railings can be created from curves, okay, I can also actually select that other curve that I created created before. And now I can select uh, one of these um, railings and say, okay, instead of this, um, I'm gonna draw another, okay, another another uh, V rep here. So for example, or this one, in, instead of this VREP, I'm gonna change it and choose another another VREP for the for the post. Okay.
Okay, so as you can see, within the parameters, I can change this and select another, another element. Okay, and in the same way, the railing, the profile of the railing can be any other curve. So, for example, I can draw here a shape like a, st a star, and I can change this parameter by the rail profile, which is also a parameter that can be edited by curve. Okay. Interesting railing, by the way. And uh, finally, uh, for example, we are going to choose this uh, railing, make sure the rotation method is store a point, and going to pick just a different point just to see how this, the orientation of these objects change by object. Okay. So, well, you see here an example of how you can also get involved geometry as parameter to change the, the geometry of the final object. And, um, well, as uh, a last example, I'm going to show you now a definition that generates um, an elevation mark. Okay. Uh, there we go. Actually, in visual art templates, you have already that object in the available as a, as a notation object. Okay. This is an object that when we change its position, it reads the Z value. And this is a similar definition that generates this object. So basically, if we take a look at this, we can see that this uh, object takes a reference plane. Okay, it reads the z value of this uh, of this uh, position of plane, and uh, through a visual arc, create text component and a text param. Um, we get all the text here as a uh, as an output that visual arc will identify as a part of the uh, final annotation. So these components are uh, provided by Visual Arc, and you can find them here under the Visual Arc tab under Genetics. So there are here the components to create hatch, create text, uh, hatch options, and text style to define the features of this text. Okay. And just notice here that rather than a, a geometry param, here we need a hatch param or a text param. To um, well, you can find them also here. Um, under params, geometry, you can find when you install Visual Arc this hatch and text params here uh, that will be required by Visual Arc to identify this kind of geometry as a text, okay, or as a hatch in this case. And finally, here I have a geometry param for the curves. So I save this now. And in the process of creating a new style, in this case, I'm going to go to uh, annotation style, so right click here, create a new style. I mean, the elevation mark is already existing, but I'm going to create a new one anyway. And uh, I will select this new definition. OK. And the key point here is in the first step of this wizard. So uh, if we set this as a node, this value will be recognized according to the insert point of the, of the annotation. But it will refer to the zero coordinate. So if we want. Uh, this value to really display the elevation according to the reference point, we need to select that reference point, in this case, a plane, actually. Uh, so it works in any, uh, any plane, in any uh, viewport. Um, so it will display the proper, the proper value. Okay, I click Next. Here we have the three components. Okay. And next, I'm going to just leave this as it is. Click OK. And now we can insert either this object in, uh, I'm going to select the number two, in any position, OK? And it will display the proper uh, elevation. Or if I'm working from the front view, OK, I can also insert this, um, this object here and see how it changes, how the value changes on the fly. All right. Okay, so these are all the examples I wanted to show you. So I'm gonna I would like to go back to the to the presentation, just to mention that um, well, in Food for Rhino you can find some uh, well object styles that people have shared, okay, with the community. So you are very welcome to develop your own uh, object styles and share them as well. And um, well, you can find some examples there. All right, in Food for Rhino. Uh, also, from the website, there are some uh, examples, some tutorials for, for each object type that will help you also to, 
to uh, learn how this works. Okay. And uh, all right, that's uh, that's it.